This is Mechanics of Materials Part 4, and again, we're moving right along with the class. Uh, we've gone through beam curvature. Uh, we looked at singularity functions for doing beam deflections. We did beam deflections in the last block using superposition techniques, and now we're going to look at statically indeterminate beams. And so that's our learning outcome. Solve a statically indeterminate beam structure using uh, superposition techniques. And so here's our example. Uh, we want to solve for the force and the moment reactions in the beam. Uh, in this module, we'll use superposition techniques for finding the deflection. And in the next module, we'll redo the problem using uh, singularity functions to solve for the beam deflection. Because sometimes for the superposition techniques, you can't always find uh, uh, common beam tables for a particular loading situation. And you may want to just go with the singularity function techniques, which uh, will, will, will work for you. And so, um, how might we start this problem? And what you should say is, well, let's at least uh, start with the static equilibrium equations. And so how do we do that? And as always, 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 I can't emphasize enough uh, in all of my classes uh, in engineering mechanics, let's draw that free body diagram. And so draw the free body diagram on your own and come on back. And so here's the free body diagram. Uh, and what's next? And so what you should say is, let's go ahead and solve for the reactions. Uh, once again, I'd like you to solve for the reactions on your own and come on back and see how you did. You should be old hat at this by now after uh, going through my previous courses. And so if we sum forces in the y direction, uh, we can solve for an equation which relates ay and by. We'll call that equation one. And then if we uh, sum moments about point O and set it equal to zero, we come up with a second equation. Uh, and it's in terms of the moment reaction at point A and BY. And so now I have two equations. That's the good news. The bad news is that we have three unknowns, uh, AY, BY, and MR, uh, the moment reaction at A. And so that gives us a sad face. Uh, but we're going to need an additional equation. And so how might we go about this? And if you recall my earlier classes, what we're going to need is, uh, this is a statically indeterminate structure. And so we're going to need uh, an additional equation. We get that as being the deformation equation or what we call the compatibility equation. We did this in my Mechanics and Materials Part 1 course for an axial loading situation. Uh, we did it in my Part 2 course for a torsional loading situation. And now we're doing it for a beam bending situation. And so here is uh, my beam loading situation. I'm going to go ahead and write a deformation equation using superposition techniques. And based on this loading, uh, I can superimpose several different loads. First of all, this is the loading that would be done by the distributed load of 73 uh, kilonewtons per meter. And then in addition, we have a loading due to the 45 uh, kilonewton point force here at 1.8 meters out. And we have a slope at the end. So this portion of the problem is similar what, to what we did in the last module uh, with the falling water uh, beam example. And then finally, uh, in addition to those two loads, as we go out to the right, uh, we have this load BY that's going to have to force us back up for geometric uh, compatibility. And so uh, that's going to give us our other equation. And we'll call that Y4. So we, on the right-hand side, we go down because of the distributed load. We go down because of the point load of 45 kilonewtons, but we're going to have to be pushed back up by the BY load so that the total deflection at the right-hand side is equal to zero. And so YB, again, is equal to zero. It's equal to this Y1, which is down, negative. This Y2, which is down, negative. This Y3, which is down, negative. And then pushing back up the BY is plus Y4. And if we substitute those values in, uh, we're going to get this result. Uh, you can see now that the only unknown that we have is BY. We can put in the numbers for everything else. We know L1, we know L2, uh, L3, we're given E and we're given I. Uh, we also know what theta is at the end. And we're going to assume that this is in the linear elastic uh, range. You should double check that to make sure that you're still in the liminal elastic range looking at the stresses uh, in, in the beam. And if I put those values in, uh, this is the equation I get. 
and I can solve for by, so that's one of my uh, force reactions, and it's equal to 94.2 kilonewtons up. Uh, once I have that, uh, it's quite uh, straightforward to solve for the other two unknowns. I go back to my static equilibrium equations, I substitute back in, I can find the value for Ay, and I can find the value for the moment reaction at the left-hand side. And that's the standard technique for solving statically indeterminate uh, beam problems. Uh, you may come up with a lot of different loading conditions, different reactions that you want to solve for, but if you use this technique, you'll be able to uh, work your way through and get the solution. And we'll see you next time.